Hi, welcome to my new series, Godot 101. This playlist will be an introduction to the Godot game engine and how it works. If you've never used a game engine before, or if you're just new to Godot, this is the place to start. If you're new here, a quick note about the channel name. We're called Kids Can Code because I teach programming and game development to kids. But if you're an adult, you're welcome here too. The material isn't dumbed down and will probably be challenging no matter what your age. Now let's get started. So what is a game engine? Well, many of you have probably heard of Unity. Uh, Unity is the 500 pound gorilla in the game industry. Uh, many, many companies, big and small, uh, use it. You've probably played Unity games, whether you realize it or not. Uh, tons of people use it. Uh, but it does have some drawbacks. Frankly, I'm not a huge fan of it. I think it's a little quirky and um, especially if you're trying to do uh, 2D games, and I enjoy making 2D games, uh, Unity is not very good at doing it. Uh, you know, it's, it's really 3D focused and the 2D stuff is kind of an afterthought, which makes it difficult. And there's tons of resources out there on Unity. Um, Unity is not free. Um, technically, it's free until you make a certain amount of money. So if you're using it just to make your own things, yes, you won't have to pay any money. Uh, but it is a it is proprietary software, um, and that's the way that that engine works. What we're going to be talking about here is in these videos is the Godot engine. Now, Godot is very similar in scope and in features and in all the stuff that it can do to Unity. Uh, the big upsides in my mind of Godot are one that it's free. Right, as you can see right here on the web page, it's uh, MIT license, which means it's 100% open source and free. You can download the source code to the engine. You can change it however you want. You can do whatever you want with it, and you will never, ever have to pay a dollar to anyone for using it. Also, it's really good at doing 2D. It does 3D great as well, and we'll get into that too, but it does 2D great right out of the box. And... Like I said before, you know, for beginners, when you're just getting started out with game development, I really suggest you start with 2D. It's a lot less complicated than 3D, and if you're trying to work in 3D when you're just starting out, you're really just biting off more than you can chew, and and it's going to be a lot harder. And once you but once you get 2D, you know, under your belt and you're really solid with it, stepping up to 3D will be a lot easier. And that also makes Godot a great choice because all the same tools and processes that you learn to use in doing 2D will be the same ones you use to make a game in 3D, so the transition will be a lot easier. So what is a game engine? Well, it's kind of a loose term that gets used to mean a lot of different things by different people, but in general, a game engine is one that provides you a framework where you can focus on making the game and you don't have to write the code to do all the underlying things like it you know like it says here it has a rendering engine that's the thing that produces the graphics in 2d or 3d so you don't have to figure out how to calculate you know pixel movements and things like that it might have a physics engine in it so that you can handle collisions and realistic physics without having to write the code for that sound, animation, networking, all these kind of things are included in there and you just use them and put them together to make your game. And there's lots of game engines out there with varying amounts of support for these different things and using different languages to write the code in and supporting different platforms for publishing your game. And that's another great thing about Godot is you can publish your game to just about any platform. If you want to turn it into a web game, if you want to distribute it on Linux, PC, Mac, if you want to go mobile, it supports iOS and Android. And there are games out there on all those platforms that people have made in Godot. So it's definitely possible to put your game wherever you want it to go. So before we start working with Godot, let's talk about a couple of concepts. And fundamental to using Godot is the concept of nodes. Everything in Godot is a node, and a node might be anything. It might be a sprite, it might be an animation, it might be a sound, but everything is a node. And every node is going to have a name, 
it's going to have all sorts of properties that define how it works and what it does. It's going to have callback functions. That means ways to make the node react to things. You can send commands to the node to have it do things. And it's extendable, meaning you can write code to make the do node do more things than it already does. So everything is a node. And nodes are arranged in what's called a tree. And a tree just means that every node is going to have one parent, only one parent, and any node can have any number of children. And they're arranged in this hierarchy so that you know this node here is a child of this node, and this node is a child of this node. And this would be at the top of the tree. Okay, and so for example, if you were to take a tree like this, any tree of nodes grouped together in Godot is called a scene. So here's an example of a scene. So we have a sprite. And that sprite has two children. One is an animation node, and one is an area 2D node. That might be what something we're using to set up its physics. And then that area 2D node has a collision node that maybe says it's a circular collision, maybe has a shape. And then maybe there's some other nodes attached to them. Altogether, this makes a scene. And so nodes and scenes are fundamental to how you build everything in Godot. Okay, so let's take a look at Godot. When you first open it, this is what you're going to see. This is the project manager. We're going to see a list of all the different Godot projects you might be working on. And I've got a few here already that are going to be used for some upcoming videos. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on New Project. And it's going to ask you first where you want to store this. So if you hit Browse, you're going to be able to choose what folder to put your project in. And I've been putting all of my stuff in a folder called GameDev underscore Godot. So I'm just going to click Create Folder and make one called uh, test one for this example. Okay, and it's going to make that folder and you're going to hit open. All right, so that puts that here. So now this is the place where it's going to save this and the name of it will be the same or different if you want to type something else. And just hit create and then you'll see it added to the list. And then anytime you want to open a project, just click on it and click edit. This is what you're going to see when you first open a new project in Godot. Now it's easy to get overwhelmed at first because there's going to be a lot going on. But for now we're going to keep it simple and just start with the basics. This center window here is your view of the game. Using the buttons at the top we can switch between 2D and 3D mode. So let's click on 2D and stick with that for now. Okay, Over here on the right you're going to see a little box labeled Scene. And remember we just learned that in Godot a scene is just a collection of nodes. So let's add a, a node to this scene by clicking on the plus button here. And you'll notice there's a tooltip there telling you what the button does. And you can also see the keyboard shortcut. Uh, meta, by the way, just means command key if you're on Mac or the control key if you're on Windows. So let's click that plus button. So now we have this window asking us to choose what kind of node we want to create. And as you can see, there are a lot of nodes and they all do different things. And this is where you might start feeling overwhelmed going, how am I ever going to learn how to use all of these things and what do they all mean? But don't worry about that. We're going to start small. We're going to start with a few of them. And over time, you will start to use some of them. And who knows, what, whatever game you're making, you may not use some of these nodes. You might not have any use for them. So you can look through them and you can see they're kind of arranged in a hierarchy. The green nodes are all about uh, GUI functions, about creating a uh, inter user interface. The blue nodes here, the bluish purple nodes, are all about 2D nodes. And then down here, these reddish ones are all about 3D nodes. And then there's a few miscellaneous ones down here that are in yellow and white. But we don't need to worry about all that. And you don't have to scroll through and find things either. You can always just find the ones you want by clicking or by typing here. So I'm going to type Sprite. And you see it's going to narrow down the search to all the nodes that have 
sprite in the name. And this 2D sprite, this is the one we want. Okay, and so we're going to click Create. And now we have a sprite that has been created here in our scene. And here in our game window, we can see it's been put up here in the corner. And you can grab the scroll bars and move over if you want to look at that part. You can also, I'm going to click with the middle mouse button and drag, and that lets me just pan my view around and look at different parts of, this, of the window. Uh, you can zoom in by scrolling your mouse wheel in and out. But this sprite doesn't have really much going on because it doesn't look like anything. So the first thing we need is we need to give it an image. Now we don't have any images here yet, but every new Godot project has the Godot icon in it. And this is a little image file that we are going to use. Very popular for using in tutorials because it's already there. So how do we set up our sprite? Well, now it's time to look at the inspector tab here. This window tells us we're looking at a sprite, and this is all the information about it. These are all the different settings that you can set on that sprite. And to start with, the one we care about is this one called texture. And right now it says null because there's nothing in the texture property. And you can click the down arrow here, and there's some options here of things you can do. But let's not worry about that. What we're going to do is we're going to take this Godot icon, and I'm going to drag it over here, and I'm going to drop it into that spot. Boom. Now my sprite has this image as its texture. And now let's grab that, and we'll drag it out and put it in the middle of the scene because we don't want it to be up there in the corner. And if I zoom out here, you can see this. might be hard to see on the video, but on your screen, you should see this purple line. That is going to be your game window when you run your game. So let's put it somewhere in the middle here okay, so that we'll see this right there. Now we're ready to see what this will look like. But if you notice up here, it says unsaved. Well, this hasn't been saved, so we need to save this scene. And if we click on scene here, we can click save. And you see the shortcut is meta S. So I'm just going to hit command S and it's going to ask me to save it. And it's going to give it a suggested file name, sprite.tscn, which is fine for us. .tscn is the extension that all of the Godot scenes are going to be putting at the end. Uh, you can use other ones, but definitely stick with that one. We'll get more into that later. And just click Save. So now this is saved. It has a name, sprite scene, and we can try it out. With this button right here that looks like a movie clapper with a play icon on it, if I hover, it says play the edited scene. So that's just going to play the scene that we have open right now. So if I click it, this is what pops up. So there is our test game with our sprite in the center of the screen. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you're as excited to learn about Godot as I am to be teaching you. I'm going to be making a bunch of Godot videos coming up, so please like and subscribe so that you can see them as soon as they're released. And if you have a few dollars to spare, please consider my Patreon page. It really does help keep the videos coming. See you next time.